Hi everyone. Uh, so here's our first video for our intro to statistics class. The idea with this video is just to kind of give a brief overview of what we'll be doing in this class and maybe introduce some vocabulary words along the way. I think what you'll see are the first few videos or the first week or so of the class. That's really all you do. You just get comfortable with some vocabulary and kind of a big picture idea of what we're doing. And the logic is when we get more into kind of the nuts and bolts of what we're doing, it'll be nice if we all kind of speak the same language. If I can use terminology and it makes sense to you. So to that end, uh, what I want to do in this video is just introduce some terms. That's it. Uh, so starting it off, I once had a teacher, this true story, that told me the worst possible way to start a class is with a definition. I don't even remember why that was such a horrible thing. But that's what some dude told me. I don't really care that dude told me that. What I'm going to do is start this class with a definition. I'm going to define the word statistics for you. And there's a method, there's a reason I'm doing this, I promise. What statistics is, at least in this class, is it's the science of drawing conclusions. So first off, it's a science, not an art. There's a prescribed series of steps that you have to do. To do what? To draw conclusions. You're going to have a question and you're going to want to answer that question. You want to draw a conclusion to answer the question. What about though? The science of drawing conclusions about a group that's called a population. And that'll end up being one of our first vocabulary words. The statistics is the science of drawing conclusions about this group called a population. How are you going to do it? You're going to use data from a different group, another vocabulary word, from a sample. So in every question in this class, what will happen is we'll have a question. And the question will be about a population. And as I'll explain in a minute, we won't be able to answer that question directly because of some property of a population. So what we'll do is we'll find a sample that's related in some way to this population. And we'll study this sample. And we'll get some data about this sample. And we'll use that data to answer the original question. Maybe this makes more sense with an example. Um, timely, COVID stuff. Uh, th that won't be everything in this for sure, but that's the first thing that popped into my head right now because that's all that I see on the news. Suppose I want to know or maybe I want to estimate the percentage of, um, I don't know, Texans. Why not? That's a big state who currently... have the coronavirus, have COVID. Why? I don't know. Just suppose, right? I started this with suppose. I can put anything I want. Suppose I want to estimate the percentage of Texans who currently have COVID. All right, this is my study. My question is, what percentage of Texans currently have COVID? There's a problem with that question. And what that problem is, is there's too many damn Texans, right? There's no way I could just go down to Texas and go test in everybody and figure out what percentage of them have this virus, this coronavirus. Um, first off, there's millions of them. There's only one of me. But even if there were a lot of us and we kind of split things up, how are we going to get everything? You're going to go knocking on some dude's door in a ranch in Texas and ask him to take a test? And how many tests, I mean, would that take? I think that's more tests than we even have nationwide right now. This is not something that is feasible to answer in any way. We cannot directly measure the population. We have a question here that's about a group, but the group is too large to measure directly. The group that your question is about that is too large to measure directly is what's called your population. So in this specific example, maybe rather than define the word population, I'll just say my population in this example would be all Texans. The population is the group, the large group if you want to think about it that way. That's so large you can't measure it directly. It's the group that your question is about that's too large to measure directly. That's my population. Uh, so what am I going to do? Well, let's see. I want to estimate the percentage of Texans who currently have COVID. Um, I maybe randomly select 500 Texans. Maybe that's a reasonable amount. It's probably not, but whatever. Play along. I randomly select 500 Texans to test and test each. So what's going on here is my question is not about these 500 Texans. It's about all Texans. My question is about the population. But the population is too large for me to measure it directly. So what am I going to do? I'm going to get a subset of that population, a representative subset of that population. More on that soon. 
I'm going to pick a smaller group that's small enough that I could measure it directly. So in this case, the sample would be the 500 randomly selected Texans. Importantly, the sample must be representative of the population. So I just say in here, I randomly select 500 Texans and leave it at that. And that's typically what we'll do in this class. But that really deserves a little bit more time than I'm going to give it in this class. How do you randomly select 500 Texans? I don't know. Right? Maybe you do it through some national registry, social security numbers. I don't know. I just want to talk about what you don't do. What you don't do is go down to the University of Texas in Austin and find 500 freshmen in some dorm and test each of them, right? The problem with that, yeah, that, those would be 500 Texans. I mean, maybe they, would, maybe they wouldn't call themselves Texans if they're students that just moved there. Whatever, I'm getting way too far into the details. The point is that would be 500 people, but that sample would not be representative of the population, right? Maybe a couple people in the dorm happen to test positive and infected everybody else. So in the dorm, the infection rate is super high, but that's not really the rate that you see all over Texas, right? You have to be careful. You want your sample to be representative of your population. Why? Because you're answering a question about the population by only looking at the sample. So if the sample doesn't represent the population, it makes no sense to use your sample data to draw your conclusion about your population, to answer the question that's asked to begin with. So it's pretty important, even though we're not gonna spend much time on it in this class, that the sample is representative of the population. For now, I just want you to understand what the population is and what the sample is. In this example, I wanna estimate the percentage of all Texans who currently have COVID. I randomly select 500 Texans and test each. Um, I don't know, suppose, let's make these numbers work out nicely. Uh, 50, sure, of them test positive. If you're mathematically inclined, you might be like, oh, 50 out of the 500, 10%. Yeah, exactly right. So you're like, so you're telling me 10% of Texans have COVID? No, I'm telling you that 10% of our sample, 10% of these 500 Texans have COVID. That does not mean that 10% of all Texans have COVID. But what could I do? Maybe I could say, I therefore conclude that um, I have to be careful on how I write my conclusion because we haven't learned how to write our statistical conclusions yet. So I can't really write a statistical conclusion until we learn how to do so later in the class. But maybe trust me, it'll end up looking something like this. I therefore conclude that between, I don't know, seven point, let's say, let's not use percentage, seven percent and 13 percent of all Texans have COVID. And you might be like, whoa, whoa, whoa slow down. Where'd that 7% and 13% come from? I, I, I didn't follow how you got 7% from 50 out of 500. I didn't. I'm making these up numbers up right here. We don't know at this point in the class how to come up with these numbers. The point that I want to make is just because 10% of the sample has COVID does not mean that 10% of the population has COVID. What you'll see later in this class, not right now, is we learn how to create things called confidence intervals. If 10% of my sample has COVID, maybe I can say with 95% certainty that between seven and 13% of the population has COVID. But to be clear, we don't know how to do this yet. So how would I test you that? If I'm gonna give you a quiz at the end of this week, what I would do is I would give you a scenario like what you see in red here. And I would ask you questions kind of like what you see in green here. I'd say, what's the population? You'd be like, it's all Texans. Say, what's the sample? You'd be like the 500 Texans that you measured, that you tested for COVID. Great, then you understand sample and population. Before I end this video, I wanna add a couple more vocabulary words. Um, the word parameter is a word I'm supposed to teach you in this section. And the word statistic is a word I'm supposed to teach you in this section. And you're like, oh, slow down, you already told me statistic right here. Statistics is the science of, blah, no. Unfortunately, the word statistic that I'm supposed to teach you here is different than the word statistics like the title of this class. So parameter and statistic, they're pretty similar. They're both just numbers that appear in this example. Uh, parameters are numbers that summarize your population. Statistics are numbers that summarize your sample. So in this case, the parameter 
that we're looking for would be the percentage of all Texans with COVID. So I estimated the parameter that I was interested in here to be between 7 and 13%. Right? The parameter is the percentage of all Texans with COVID. The statistic is the percentage of um, the 500, the percentage of the sample with COVID. So what's going on, I could have rephrased this definition to say that what statistics is in this class is it's the science of estimating parameters using statistics, right? That would have been confusing because I would have said statistics and then defined it in terms of the word statistic, but these mean different things. This is talking about the class statistics. This is talking about the vocabulary word statistic. All a statistic is, is a number that represents the sample, not the population. Statistic and parameter are pretty similar. If people get them wrong, it's just they confuse the two of them. Similarly, population and sample are pretty similar. And if people get them wrong, it's typically because they flip the two around. If you are comfortable in the difference between the population and the sample, it's worth pointing out that population and parameter both start with the letter P. So it might help you remember that a parameter is a number that summarizes the population, whereas a statistic is a number that summarizes the sample. At any rate, four vocabulary words, population, sample, perimeter, parameter, and statistic. In this case, the population is all Texans, the group that my question is about. I want to estimate the percentage of all Texans who currently have COVID. The sample is the group that is more manageable for me to measure directly. There's too many Texans for me to test them all, but maybe I could test 500 of them. And oh, by the way, maybe important note, Your sample needs to be representative of your population. And if that's one of those things you just want to memorize, fine. Uh, but I'd argue that it kind of makes sense because what we're doing here is we have a question about the population, but we're using sample data to answer that question. You have a question about one group, and you're using the data from a different group to answer it. That's only gonna work if that other group represents the first group that the question is about. At any rate, in this example, my sample were the 500 Texans that I measured directly. My population were all Texans. The parameter that I'm interested in studying is the percentage of all Texans with COVID, the percentage of the population with COVID. The statistic is the number that I actually calculated, the percentage of the sample that has COVID. Generally speaking in this class, the statistic will be something that you calculate. The parameter will be something that you don't calculate, but you can talk about it. You can estimate it. The question is about the parameter and you use the statistic to estimate the parameter. And I think that that's a lot. If out of this first video, if you right now feel comfortable between population, sample, parameter, and statistic and see why this note is kind of important, then that's great. I don't want these to be super long, so maybe I'll end this video here.